all right my dear students let's go ahead and start our class today today we'll be going ahead and starting the discussion on basically we'll be going ahead and doing the discussion on additional chapters which are required to be covered for your ca final may 24 exam now if you are a student who has taken our classes for may 24 or you are a student who has gone ahead and taken our classes for november 23 or before that you have to go and you are writing your exam in may 24 you have to go ahead and cover this now uh for those students who have taken our classes for the May 24 and November 23 attempt, for them in the Google Drive or the mobile app, I'll go ahead and upload these notes as well as I will go ahead and upload the video. You can see it from there. Also, additionally, this video will also be available on YouTube. So you can see it from there. Anywhere is fine. Let's go ahead and start our class. These notes which are there, you can find in CA final uh, rameshsoni.com under rameshsoni.com CA final free resources, free resources in the CA final May 24 folder. You will find it over there. Amazon.com free resources CA final May 24 folder. Additional chapters to be covered for May 24. I'll name the file as you can download it from there and start your learning. Everyone over here now. Now, additionally, the ICI has gone ahead and told one chapter is e-commerce under GST, e-commerce transactions under GST, which actually you will see is already covered by us during class. Next is ethics under gst a four very very small chapter of four to five pages we'll go ahead and cover additionally the ICI has given four case studies also which a student has to go ahead and cover actually the new book which has come for may 24 released by the ICI it says offenses and penalties and case studies basically whatever the uh, ethics and case studies which are there are provided in that chapter offenses and penalties and ethics under gst plus the case studies has been provided in that chapter of offenses and penalties in the may 24 attempt now we'll be going ahead and covering all this please come to the e-commerce the first first chapter which we are going to cover is e-commerce transactions under gst e-commerce transaction actually when you see this chapter this chapter has already been discussed by us whether you have taken our classes for November 20, whether you have taken our classes for May 24 or any attempt before that we have already gone ahead and learned this chapter what they have gone ahead and done is in your chapter of charge of gst one section number nine five is there and section number five five is there nine five and section number five five which talks about the e-commerce operator will be liable whenever supplies are done through them transportation housekeeping accommodation and restaurant that is basically being covered in this chapter of e-commerce okay first thing which is covered which we have already learned okay second thing in registration chapter we have gone ahead and seen that person who is supplying through e-commerce has to take compulsory registration however supplier of service is exempted up to 20 lakh 10 lakh supplier of goods is also exempted up to 40 20 or 10 if they have not crossed the registration limit this is the new amendment so all this registration related topic relating to e-commerce also has been provided in the chapter of e-commerce transaction additionally the tds ka chap tcs ka chapter of section number 52 also they have gone ahead and put it in the e-commerce transaction so basically e-commerce transaction ka chapter is nothing it covers these three things has been attached together and have been put in that chapter so you don't have to worry about it november 20 or may 24 student who have taken our classes these things were already covered in the class so arms relax one small point which i found in the e-commerce wala chapter one additional point which they have gone ahead and told is that there are various kinds of e-commerce models now i've gone ahead and written down over here so that by chance if they ask you for three mark what are the various kinds of e-commerce model you can take care of it before understanding the taxability of e-commerce we should be conservant conversant with the various basic business model employed by e-commerce industry to facilitate transaction between supplier and recipient so baba in e-commerce what happens in e-commerce there will be one buyer there will be one supplier and there will be an e-commerce operator so they have gone ahead and told what are the various types of e-commerce transactions e-commerce models which are being followed let's talk about it number one online marketplace model sir what's a online marketplace model online marketplace model may what happen e-commerce does the listing of the products which a seller is selling person goes online he sees all the product and then he says i like this so he will go ahead the buyer will go ahead and order for the product the product ka details will come over here he will go ahead and dispatch he will make the payment the e-commerce will deduct tcs and remaining amount the e-commerce operator pays him so this is basically an e-commerce ka model which is an online marketplace model it's a marketplace which is being created by an e-commerce operator where customers can come see the product the order goes to the seller and seller dispatches so they have told over here in a online place model 
an online centralized platform is provided connecting manufacturers or retailers with potential customer so basically with the potential customer these suppliers are being connected okay the platform itself does not own or stock the product or has the expertise to provide service being sought by customer means online e-commerce operator is not providing any service or supplying goods instead it merely facilitates the transaction and may offer additional services such as payment processing customer support and logistic might be sir to take the product from here to here logistic is being provided by them baba you imagine flipkart what do you do in flipkart flipkart me you go in the e-commerce car flipkart ka, flipkart.com basically there you go ahead and see the product you place the order of the product order ka details goes to the seller seller ke haan se e-commerce ka basically e-cart which belongs to e-commerce operator they go ahead and take the goods and deliver it to you i hope everyone is clear the next one the actual supply of goods is done by the respective supplier he is the actual supplier the platform generates revenue by charging fees or commission for using the marketplace and accessing bias so what they do they go ahead and raise their commission kind of saying hey supplier you supplied through us you have to pay us a commission or whatever is the fees for listing your product you have to go ahead and pay us it is sometime 15 percent sometime 20 sometime 25 percent then the commission is typically typically a percentage of the sale made by the supplier so these are the various websites which are there for services the various websites are uber ola etc they also provide a market base this is the uh, buyer ola uber does what this is the recipient this is the supplier this is the marketplace here people go these people uh, give the service give the order to the cab driver cab driver goes and gives the service so basically that is also a online marketplace done sir this point is clear now direct sales model what is a direct sale model in a direct sale model for example ramesh sony classes i have my own website i have my own website what do i do through my own website i go ahead and if you come to my e-commerce platform which is ramesh.com you place the order i go ahead and dispatch the goods to you so that's a direct sale model in direct sale model business sell their product directly to the consumer through their, through their own store or website customer browse the website and select the product and complete the purchase directly with the supplier so supposingly this is you who want to buy a book you came to rameshsone.com okay rameshsone.com you saw a book what will we do you will go ahead make the payment to us we will go ahead and dispatch the product to you so this is a direct sale model rameshsone.com is also an e-commerce operator what we do you place the order we directly dispatch it to you so here there is no intermediary e-commerce in between we are direct sales we are in direct sale model okay the next is inventory model in inventory model inventory of goods and services is owned by the e-commerce operator that it supplies to the customer the platform takes responsibility for warehousing inventory management and fulfillment of order this model is typically for retail seller who have who also have an online presence now what happens in this uh, inventory model so for an example this is uh, flipkart now flipkart ka case mein flipkart is also an e-commerce operator through which people buy plus e-commerce also has its own goods people go place an order online and from their own warehouse they go ahead and dispatch it to the customer so this is like a direct sale model only wherein they are going ahead and telling in inventory model the flipkart owns the inventory keeps the inventory maintains the inventory people place an order they have their own product with them they sell it to the customer so flipkart amazon all these people what they do is one they go ahead and give a marketplace also to people so when people place an order it comes over here here it goes so this is known as online marketplace also they also have products which they own themselves for an example amazon amazon ka basics which are there are managed by amazon only they keep their product with themselves whenever people place an order from their warehouse they fulfill the order this is known as inventory model where an e-commerce operator maintains his own inventory okay sir so above e-commerce business models are not exhaustive many e-commerce model have been adopted many uh, e-commerce businesses may adopt a combination of this to suit their specific need and industry dynamics might be an e-commerce platform can operate with all the three model whenever order comes it can go ahead and give it to supplier supplier will dispatch whenever order comes it keeps its own inventory it dispatches from that many types of model can be followed it is not exhaustive any 
other way of classifying e-commerce is on the basis of supplier recipient combination for instance as business to consumer flipkart does business to consumer now business to business udan udan does business to business consumer to consumer olx one consumer is there another consumer is there he sells it to another consumer consumer to business model can be there consumer to government model can be there government to consumer model can be there and business to government model wherein business is supplying only to government that kind of model also can be adopted in e-commerce in your exam if they go ahead and ask you please remember the three types of e-commerce model that's all i had to talk over here in e-commerce chapter section number nine five has been covered which was with respect to e-commerce operator thar services we had already discussed in e uh, e-commerce registration with respect to e-commerce is being discussed that e-commerce ke through if person is supplying goods he has to take compulsory registration supplier of service exempted supplier of goods also exempted up to 40 20 or 10 i hope you guys remember now this is a new new amendment and now last one over here uh is sir relating to tcs that's all so registration e-commerce when they have to deduct tcs they have to take compulsory registration all these points also has been covered in this chapter which we have already discussed as a part in other chapters so i'm not going ahead and repeating this again let's go ahead and now move to the next chapter the next chapter is ethics please come to ethics now please come to ethics now what do you mean by ethics what do you mean by ethics they have gone ahead and told over here baba you would have heard be ethical be ethical be right do things ethically don't do unethical practices be ethical now why ethics ka part has been included under gst because in gst you know you will go ahead and see many places ca cma etc are involved in going ahead and certifying lot of things correct so why they have gone ahead and included ethics ka chapter over here is in the recent world you will see many frauds being undertaken and somewhere the fraud also gets connected to a ca who would have gone ahead and helped would have gone ahead and provided some kind of support in doing that unethical practice and hence institute is basically trying to go ahead and tell its future ca that beta you don't do unethical thing do things ethically do things morally right and that is why this chapter has been included let's quickly go ahead and cover the oxford dictionary defines ethics as the moral principle that governs a person's behavior or your moral or how an activity is con con being conducted means your moral principle you should always be right you should not be doing wrong thing then ethics provide a framework to distinguish between right and wrong what is right what is wrong what is ethical what is unethical guiding decision making whether this is ethical if this is ethical i should take i should take this path so that is being told by ethics and determining what is considered morally accepted in a given context ethics and are fundamentals to effective functioning of any tax system now in a tax system why ethics are important just imagine my ca who is there is very ethical he says ramesh if, if even if government says that this much tax is to be paid you please pay and you sleep peacefully my ca is like that only he says me ramesh you have come to file your return please pay the taxes exactly correct whatever is there no rupee one here and there you will sleep peacefully so my ca is very ethical now sometimes what happens might be there is some people uh, who might have got a tax consultant who goes ahead and says hey why to pay taxes and all no tension at all we'll see what will happen you don't pay taxes now just imagine in the market i am also doing business in the market one person is also doing business now what is happening over here this person who is there he has hired a tax consultant not a ca who is very unethical tax consultant he is going ahead and telling hey don't pay taxes correctly don't pay this much why to pay aram say sleep nothing will happen and my ca goes ahead and tells me ramesh even if it is this much tax you must pay aram say if you want to stay in the country uh, to be very frank my ca says this if you want to stay in the country aram say relax please go ahead and pay the tax please sleep peacefully now you tell me one thing who is more ethical my ca over here is ethical and that is what now just imagine both of us doing same business i am going ahead and supposedly uh, declaring this much amount profit he is going ahead and declaring this much amount of profit now you tell me one thing when he is declaring less profit he is paying less taxes i will feel bad no so government is going ahead and telling ramesh who is unethical you forget it we are what uh, our institute is selling ramesh you please follow what is ethical and all the cas also should go ahead and follow what is ethical they are telling over here ethics are fundamentals to effective functioning of tax system in a tax system also ethics are very important and this also holds true for goods and service tax regime 
ethical conduct contributes to increase regulatory compliance because you see if it is if he is ethical then compliances will be done properly tax evasion will not happen now if tax evasion does not happen i am paying more tax to the country the country will have more money if the country has more money the development in the country can happen which in turn leads to increase government revenue this tax can be used for public welfare and development project then it may also help in creating a fair transparent trustworthy tax environment and reduce uncertainty that supports economic growth and development economic growth will happen properly if i am going ahead and paying taxes everyone pays their taxes correctly government will have revenue and at the end of the day it will lead to development of the country basically unethical practices like bogus invoice without supply wrongfully availing of itc are not undermining are on not only undermining the tax revenue means the tax revenue is also coming down because of all this bogus invoice etc but also creates a uneven play field for honest tax payer now just imagine are we playing on the same ground he is doing unethical practice i am doing ethical practice it's not a level playing ground his profit is declaring less he is paying less taxes so it provides a unethical uh uneven playing field for honest tax payers ethical behaviors may also reduce tax disputes and litigation baba i'll sleep is fully even if department calls me in future i can aram se go and tell sir tell me what is the point nothing because i there will be no dispute i have already paid my taxes correctly so i've just written a crux over here let's go ahead so the next one over here now what is the role of a chartered accountant now if you become a chartered accountant tomorrow in future what will be your role your role will be to do everything ethically what is morally right to lead to the development of the country to not be involved in all this bogus invoice etc that is what is being told let's go ahead and cover you guys already know because all of you are very ethical yes sir i believe all my students are very ethical will do things ethically let's understand this now they can ask you a question in the exam role of a chartered accountant in ensuring ethics under gst so out of this you can write some lines and come the professional behavior of a chartered accountant is governed by a set of ethical guidelines known as the code of ethics which is laid by the icci icci has laid a code of ethics and you must all abide by it every chartered accountant has to abide by the code of ethics it encourages chartered accountant to be honest fair and professional in their working and advocates to follow the rules to ensure that they are doing the right thing for their client and the public at large ultimately when you are doing the right thing for your public uh, for your client that is leading to tax money coming to the government and leading to the development of public and hence government is going ahead and telling a ca's role is very important and he should avoid he should abide by the code he should not avoid he should abide by the code of ethics so that everything is done ethically by him the fundamental principles are integrity he should follow his integrity objectivity professional compete and due care should be taken confidentially and professional behavior a ca should be in he should have integrity he should not do anything wrong then he should take due care he should maintain confidentiality of the client and professional behavior should be followed when a client comes and says sir i want to pay this much tax you should say no sir what is correct i'll tell you that much tax has to be paid you should always have a professional behavior the chartered accountants act prescribes the disciplinary action if a chartered accountant is found guilty of any professional you will see many chartered accountants sir thrown out from the list why because they would have done something wrong or other misconduct so it says discipline in the action if chartered accountant is found guilty of professional or other misconduct the same has been discussed in chapter number 19 of professional ethics and liabilities of auditor in paper number 3 advanced auditing assurance and professional ethics this has been also discussed professional ethics and liabilities has also been discussed in your auditing ka chapter is what they are telling a chartered accountant in practice would be deemed guilty of professional misconduct under clause 7 part 1 of schedule 2 of chartered accountants act if he does not exercise due diligence or or is gross negligence grossly negligent in conduct of his professional duties when a prof chartered accountant supposingly is certifying something he should not be negligent he should take due diligence to check what he is certifying is correct that is what they are telling and if you are guilty baba of misconduct then they are going ahead and telling you will be basically whatever is told under the code of ethics that will happen to you next further clause 8 of part 1 of second schedule of chartered accountants act a chartered accountant shall be deemed to be guilty he will be guilty he will be deemed to be guilty when 
or professional misconduct if he falls fails to obtain sufficient information which is necessary for expressing an opinion or its ex exceptions are sufficiently material to neglect the expression of opinion means whenever a chartered accountant is certifying something whenever a chartered accountant is going ahead and giving an opinion he should make sure that before giving an opinion he has gone ahead and taken all the evidences whatever information was required sufficient information was being verified properly by him then otherwise he'll begin to of misconduct next a chartered accountant needs to follow ethical conduct while discharging his professional duty under the gst namely compliance function a chartered accountant should properly ethically do the compliances furnishing certification or report baba in ca uh, in gst you will see chartered accountant has to go ahead and give certificates at lot of time section number 181 a b c d whenever you are getting credit you remember special circumstances when you are given credit if the amount is more than 2 lakh rupees chartered accountant has to certify so chartered accountant has to make sure that whenever he is giving advisory whenever he is doing compliances he is taking due care and professionally he is going ahead professionally he is going ahead and discharging his duty by adhering to set of principles and practices that promote integrity baba his integrity he should maintain transparency should be there and compliances should be done in a proper may manner he should maintain professional knowledge and skill at le level required to ensure that a client or employer receives competent services based on latest applicable position basically a chartered accountant should also stay updated with the latest position so that he can go ahead and give professional service properly to the client in case of any violation in performing compliance certificates etc he is also liable to penalty and prosecution under the gst law gst law mein section number 122 is there which goes ahead and says if a chartered accountant goes ahead and does anything wrong then baba he will also be penalized that penalty provisions are there chartered accountants play a crucial role in ensuring compliance with their client organization this involves assisting in the process of obtaining registration a chartered accountant plays a crucial role when a client has to obtain registration chartered accountant should help him with the proper document which he has, which should be provided structuring the transaction and condition stipulated in the agreement for making supply he should help them in making supply properly structuring transaction properly that sir if you are selling to him invoice should be issued invoice may all details should be provided he should help in optimizing tax position so that the client saves tax in the right manner ensuring the necessary gst compliance including eva bill is done payment of tax after set off etc is done properly tds tcs ka compliances are done compliance with anti profiteering he should not help the client in doing profiteering etc and timely filing of return all this may a chartered accountant plays a very crucial role sir our to returns are being being filed by a person who is not a ca only baba you never know when you will have any problem and then that tax consultant will tell you oh no i didn't know this tax ka position now you see what is to be done he will run away then what will you do so beta at least a chartered accountant who is there okay i'm not telling anything against a non chartered accountant but what i'm telling is chartered accountant must make sure that he is updated with the tax knowledge and provide professional services to the client so that the client is timely filing his return eva bill is raised properly payment of tax is done tds tcs is done client is not doing profiteering now you guys have studied all this thing when you go and advise your client will you not be in a better position to do it yes sir then generally charter accountants are responsible for ensuring the maintenance of accurate and detailed record of all gst transaction charter accountants are responsible accounts and record chapter may be have learned that you should maintain your invoices received other relevant documents such meticulous recording keeping is a legal requirement and as well as an ethical duty of a charter accountant to basically guide his client saying sir for your opening balance purchases sales all the details should be maintained properly itc taken all the itc related documents should be maintained properly then another major responsibility of a chartered accountant in the realm of gst is to act as a tax advisor sir what position should be taken what should you do this entails a comprehensive understanding of client business and goal what are the client's business what is the goal of the client you have to understand it properly and then accordingly advise your client baba a chartered accountant gives advisory services also so he should give it properly then chartered accountants must assess the impact of gst on various aspects of business including supply chain 
pricing strategies and financial reporting a chartered accountant who holds a certificate of practice and who has not been debarred from practice can also appear on behalf of the client before the gst of a chartered chartered accountant can also be authorized representative they can go on behalf of the client to the gst officer gst appellate authority appellate tribunal in connection with proceedings as an authorized representative of the client this is also one more responsibility of a chartered accountant this is also role of a chartered accountant then further chartered accountants play a vital role in gst ecosystem by providing certification that a firm complies with the gst laws then these certifications are mandatory in specific situation and are required to ensure compliance now whenever 181 a b c d may <coughs> you have to go ahead and take credit credit is more than 2 lakh rupees then chartered accountant must certify refund claim more than 2 lakh rupees chartered accountant must certify all these certifications are given by whom chartered accountant so when he is giving all this he should ensure that he has done due diligence and has not done any negligent in providing the certificates properly then the pri the primary the primary aim at curbing the unethical practice and preventing leakage of revenue because if leakage of revenue happens then baba remember one thing there will be first of all action on the chartered accountant also gross negligence secondly even if the chartered accountant is not caught country is losing the revenue and because the country is losing the revenue the company the country will be in a back footstep wherein the country will not be able to develop properly thus it is duty of chartered accountant to exercise utmost care due diligence under while granting the certification they should take due diligence properly while providing certification the chartered accountant has to comply with ethical requirement under the code of ethics the relevant applicable requirement the standard of quality control quality control for firms that perform audit review of historical financial information and other assurance all this basically a compli all this compliance is uh, basically whenever a chartered accountant is going ahead and giving certification etc he has to go ahead and comply with all the ethical requirements of the code of ethics which has been issued by the icai okay sir now by chance if they go ahead and ask you write the role of a chartered accountant they can go ahead and ask you for three mark i have gone ahead and told you lot of things over here all this you can make up a good story and go ahead and tell so you have to read it once again so that you remember some point out of it and you can write it in the exam and come done sir point is clear let's let's go ahead and see what are the various certificates under the gst law which has been issued which are being issued by a chartered accountant i hope you guys remember i'll show you from the chart book quickly so that you guys can recall these points i'll show you over here number 1 if you guys remember in the itc chapter we had gone ahead and learned section number 18 yes sir we had gone if you don't have the chart book also no problem you guys would have learned from any other book the same thing will be told over there see in section number 181 we had section number 181a we had 181b we had 181c and d when they had gone ahead and told new registration you are taking voluntary registration you are taking or composition dealer becoming regular tax payer exempt supplier or registered person becoming taxable supply then you are eligible to take the itc of the stock semi finished goods finished goods which are inputs which are lying in your stock semi finished goods finished goods in these two cases you are also eligible for capital goods ka credit now here we had gone ahead and learned that if the amount is more than 2 lakh the chartered accountant or cost accountant has to go ahead and give certificate now what is the role of a chartered accountant this ethics under gst basically has is from the point of view of chartered accountant because icai has gone ahead and released it theek hai now what they have gone ahead and told over here sir whenever this gst itc 01 declaration is done if the amount is more than 2 lakh rupees the chartered accountant should take care that sir he has done due diligence properly that the amount of itc the client is claiming on inputs in stock semi finished goods and finished goods the client is claiming correctly so who has to do the certification chartered accountant has to give the certificate after exercising due diligence and that is what is being told over here certification of amount of itc at the time of registration voluntary registration switching regular to regular tax payer or coming to tax payment system section number 181 read with rule number 40 we have already learned this you have already learned there is nothing what they are going ahead and telling over here section number 181a inputs ka credit sir new registration if you apply within 30 days 
and you got a certificate then they are going in and telling the registration certificate will be effective from the date of becoming liable one day prior whatever inputs my stock is there semi finished inputs lying in stock semi finished good finished goods you will be eligible to take the credit if the amount is more than 2 lakhs chart accountant will, will have to certify sir voluntary registration that day i am granted registration from that day one day prior whatever stock ka credit i have i am eligible to take then composition person becoming regular tax payer the day he starts paying tax from under section number 9 regular tax payer one day prior input in stock semi finished goods finished goods whatever input is there he is eligible to take plus capital goods ka credit he is allowed sir exam supply of a taxable person becoming taxable supply exam supply of a registered person now becoming taxable supply the day supplies become taxable one day prior whatever inputs are in stock semi finished goods finished goods plus capital goods ka credit reduced amount of credit he can take so in the above cases the registered person has to make a declaration in itc01 on the common portal specifying the inputs held in stock semi finished goods finished goods and capital goods the declaration should be filed within 30 days extendable is also there from the date when the registered person becomes eligible if the claim of itc is more than 2 lakh rupees the charter accountant needs to give a charter accountant or the cost accountant needs to give a declaration he has to certify basically he has to give a certificate the charter accountant here this is the main important point which they are telling the charter accountant is required to examine the books of account and other relevant document records of the taxpayer and to provide reasonable assurance that the amount of declared in the form itc01 it has to be accurate it has to be accurate the client should not be going ahead and claiming more from the books of account and other relevant document records of the taxpayer and is claimed as itc so charter accountant should go ahead and make sure that whatever itc the client is claiming if the amount is up to 2 lakh then baba self certified their charter accountant role is not there but the, the amount is more than 2 lakh rupees charter accountant has to certify that the amount is right next the accurate then certification on sale merger etc i hope you guys remember over here whenever there is a sale merger amalgamation etc correct in this scenario in this scenario also chart accountant or cost accountant certificate gst itc 02 may gst itc 02 has to be filed so that the credit can be transferred so here also chart accountant certificate is mandatory and a chart accountant should ensure that he has gone ahead and done due diligence properly checked whatever is the amount which has been transferred in the gst itc 02 to see in case of merger demerger amalgamation transfer of ownership of business the itc remaining unutilized in the registered person in the person's book whatever is unutilized he can transfer can be transferred to the newly entity provided there is a specific provision for transfer of liability means whenever assets are transferred liabilities also should be transferred so chart accountant has to make sure that all the assets and liabilities have been transferred the registered person should furnish itc 02 on the common portal further he needs to submit a chart accountant certificate or cost accountant certificate specifying that there is a i am using more chart accountant word because the ethics under gst this chapter has been issued by the icai now for ca or cma student cma students also can learn anyways there is nothing no harm in learning this and certify in constitution that the change in constitution has been done accordance with the provision of transfer of liabilities when assets were transferred liabilities also were transferred this chartered accountant has to certify the chartered accountant is required to examine the books of account and other relevant record of the taxpayer and to provide reasonable assurance that the sale merger etc has been done with specific provision for transfer of liabilities means when the assets were transferred the liabilities were also transferred basically a chartered accountant certificate when it is given gst itc 02 when you are filing this chartered accountant certificate has to be attached wherein a chartered accountant should go ahead and certify saying that sir all the assets along with the liabilities the provision for transfer of liabilities has also happened then also then only it's a transfer of business done then the next one baba whenever refund is more than 2 lakh rupees gst rfd 01 you file and the refund is more than 2 lakh rupees then a chartered accountant has to certify see a certificate in nx2 of gst rfd 01 certification in case of refund is more than 2 lakh rupees so it says is to be issued by a chartered accountant or cost accountant to the effect that the incidence of tax interest or any other amount claimed as refund has not been passed on to any other person means supposingly i am claiming a refund of more than 2 lakh rupees i have not passed on the burden on my 
customer and the refund is due to me only for that a charter accountant certificate was required yes sir there is no unjust enrichment in case of the applicant and when the refund is given to him there is no unjust enrichment he is not becoming rich at the cost of someone else he has not passed on the benefit in case the where the refund amount exceeds 2 lakh the certificate by the chart accountant should be based on meticulous examination of books he should have examined the books of account and other relevant records supporting the refund providing a reasonable assurance that the incidence of tax interest on any other amount which is being claimed as refund has not been passed on to any other person he has not gone ahead and passed the burden of the refund which he is going ahead and claiming refund is due to me only for that i have to give a chartered accountant's certificate the next one over here certification of amount of itc reversal in case uh, cancellation of registration or on switching or existing from taxpayer status i hope you guys remember over here sir if i am switching to composition or my supplies are becoming exam supply tax all supply became exam supply in that scenario also i have to do the reversal of the credit when you are doing reversal of the credit you have to go ahead and calculate whatever the inputs where credit was taken that has to be reversed yes sir capital goods which were held in stock for the capital goods itc taken divided by 60 into balance life that that much amount has to be reversed now amount of reversal has to be calculated separately but here you have to go ahead and file gst itc 03 here chartered accountant certificate was required for an example when you are calculating the reversal with respect to input if you don't have the invoices for the input then how will you do the reversal how will you do the reversal if you don't have the inputs ka invoices might be the inputs are very old and you don't have the invoices Huh. So, if you don't have an invoice, now if you don't have the invoice for the inputs, how will you reverse the credit? Because on the inputs, whatever the ITC was there, which was taken on the inputs, uh, you have to go ahead and reverse. Now, how will you go ahead and reverse the input? So, here the other accountant comes into picture when there is no, supposingly, no tax invoices of inputs are available. Estimate based on market price of the market price of the event on the day of the uh, event whatever the market price of the inputs were there based on that you have to reverse the credit you will take whatever market price you find it suitable so here chartered accountant comes into picture that sir fair market value of goods is used for inputs you have used fair market value it should be practiced by a chart accountant or cost accountant and that is what they have gone ahead and told now whenever you are closing your business section number 295 may also you have to go ahead and pay the taxes on your inputs and capital goods correct similarly in section number 18 for when you are switching to composition or taxable supplies become exam supply then they are going ahead and telling the input tax credit on the input should be reversed proportionately based on the corresponding invoice on which itc has been availed if invoices are not available the it should be reversed on the basis of market price on the date of switching over ex, uh, ex, uh, exemption means taxable supplies becoming exam supply or cancellation registration the details so furnished on the basis of market price should be duly certified by chart accountant again the same line over here the chart accountant should be the chart accountant certification by the chart accountant should be based on meticulous examination of the books of account and other relevant record by the taxpayer thereby providing a reasonable assurance government is provided with a reasonable assurance as the correctness of the quantum of amount of itc to be reversed where the tax invoice relating to inputs are not available so supposingly your registration you have got you are going for cancellation of registration section number 295 or you are switching from normal to composition scheme or taxable supplies are becoming exam supply then in that scenario you have to go ahead and reverse the credit now supposingly invoices are not available then on the date of the event market price has to be taken on the date of the event and accordingly you have to reverse the credit now when you are reversing the credit chartered account if you have taken the based on the market price of the date of the event then that has to be certified by a chartered accountant so that is what they are telling the details so furnished on the basis of market value needed to be duly certified by a chartered accountant and chartered accountant should meticulously examine he should properly examine the records and the documents which are provided by the charter accountant to provide reasonable assurance that whatever the amount of itc that is being reversed is actually correct done sir then baba i hope you guys remember fifth point over here is when you are going ahead and seeing over here in your uh, audit wala chapter you would have seen audit ka chapter may also 
one charter accountant and cost accountant certificate was told i'll show you section number 66 whenever value declared is not correct or credit availed is not within normal limit the commissioner ka permission will be taken by the assistant commissioner and you will be told that you get your accounts and records no examined by a chartered accountant or a cost accountant who is nominated by the commissioner now when the chartered accountant is coming to a premises and doing the records ka examination he will do the accounts and records ka examination he'll conclude and he will provide a report which is basically certified by him to the assistant commissioner so here also the chartered accountant has to do his work meticulously he should come to a premises check all the documents properly and then only give his certificate to the assistant commissioner that is what is being told over here section number 66 provide that if at any stage i hope you guys remember if at any stage of scrutiny inquiry investigation or any other proceeding any officer not below the rank of assistant commissioner having regards to the nature and complexity is of the opinion that value declared is not correct or the credit availed is not within normal limit he can go ahead and take commissioner ka permission and issue and give a direction to the registered person that sir you please get your accounts audited by chart accountant or cost accountant as may be nominated by the commissioner whichever chart accountant or cost accountant so basically assistant commissioner will go ahead and tell me ramesh get your accounts and accounts and record audited by this chart accountant cost accountant who is nominated by the commissioner he will be paid by the department only i hope you guys remember the chart accountant shall submit the report signed and certified within 90 days i hope you guys remember within 90 days the chart accountant will give the report if not done again 90 days ka time is provided and once the audit is done by the chart accountant he will give his certificate duly signed and certified so it says over here the assistant commissioner may extend by 90 days when application is received from the registered person or chart accountant or for any material uh, or sufficient reason the examine the expenses including the remuneration of chart accountant i have already told you the expenses will be borne by the department because the chart accountant or cost accountant is nominated by the commissioner so what they are telling over here baba in your exam uh, you can use the word mostly chart accountant because ethics uh, from a view of chart accountant i'm telling you for cma student if uh, you are learning you can also take it from ca uh, cost accountant point of view Thikha, sir. shall be determined and paid by the commissioner and such determination shall be final on conclusion of special audit the registered person shall be informed of the finding upon the conclusion of special audit the registered person is communicated the proposed tax etc along with the audit finding and the registered person is called upon to discharge his liability once the audit is done the person will be informed he will be given an opportunity of being heard and he has to go ahead and pay whatever the tax is there to discharge the liability if he doesn't do it then baba 73 and 74 may demand and recovery will start in case registered person discharges no further action is taken otherwise 73 and 74 ka proceeding will start the charter accountant must approach now this is the role of the chart accountant special audit on unbiased and immaterial mindset free from any external influence or conflict of interest you went to do the now one chart accountant supposingly you went to do the only for classroom purpose okay you went to do the special audit you told the when you are doing the special audit to the person i hey, give some money i will not report this now do, you should not be doing this this ensures that audit findings are based on factual be evidences and uh professional judgment rather than personal biasness you should not have any personal biasness over there he should first go through the terms of the reference provided by gst authorities to understand the scope and objective of special audit he should understand what is the scope what am i going over there why am i going over there the document outlines the specific area and tax period now why is why is the charter accountant going to the client place and doing the audit special audit what is that he is trying to find out the chart accountant should carefully read that and go he should conduct a comprehensive review of all the relevant document including financial statement invoices transaction records and any other document provided by the taxpayer he should go ahead and comprehensively properly review all the documents financial statement invoices transaction records which are given by the taxpayer this ensures that audit findings are based on uh accurate and reliable information he should take step to identify and mitigate any potential conflict of interest that may arise during the audit this includes refraining from engaging in any activity or relationship that could compromise the objectivity you should not get into any uh, uh any uh, personal conversation with the client you should not build any relation ah you are my friend now i'll not report this you should not be doing this you give me some money no no don't do all this thing if a 
conflict of interest does arise it should be promptly disclosed he should not have any conflict of interest might be accountant chart accountant went to do the audit of a place and where his wife is working or his family member is working he already has a relation with that place he should always promptly disclose the related parties relevant parties apart from the aforesaid specific provision there may be specific scenario which where the attested document so they are telling apart from the specified role in the gst law there may be specific provision this is another part which they are telling certificates issued by chartered accountants are relied upon in the proceedings in the gst law by the tax authorities and other judicial forum as a general practice which while dealing under the gst law related disputes baba the above other than this also there can be places where the gst authorities rely on a chart accountant certificate so beta you must be ethical and do everything ethically that's all done sir point is clear sir what is the exam ka question expected now out of this big paragraph you can have a three mark question right a uh, role of charter accountant in ensuring ethics under gst so you can write any point out of this then what are the various certification and report which are to be provided by chartered accountant i believe this can be the question this time you have to remember itc01 ka case mein you have to remember itc02 ka case mein you have to remember when uh, refund is given refund ka case mein you have to remember when market price has to be assumed when you have to reverse the credit that time also market price of the inputs chartered accountant has to play a significant role audit report when it is provided also chartered accountant plays a specific significant role i believe this point they can go ahead and ask what are the certification report to be furnished by chartered accountant under the gst law five mark they can go ahead and ask you please remember them done sir this point is clear baba that's all was with the chapter of ethics we are done with the chapter of ethics congratulations people done now we have the case studies which are there actually offenses and penalties chapter now has been named as offenses penalties and ethical practice plus the case studies has been also included in that chapter so we are now going to understand basically for your may 24 attempt onwards case studies are also applicable ic has gone ahead and given four case studies let's quickly go ahead and understand all of them this is the story let's read the first case study which is there now when we are learning the case study before learning the case study you should have remembered uh, your offenses and penalties chapter because a lot of linkage will come from offenses and penalties. So let's go ahead and start understanding one by one all the case studies which are there. The first case study, Messrs. L, L and Co. is a partnership firm with two partners, Mr. X and Y, is registered in the GST under GST in Kolkata, West Bengal, ML and Co. So case study number one, ML and Co. It is registered person in Kolkata. It has two partner uh, which is Mr. X and Y. It is engaged in supplying of material relating to construction activity. What is it supplying everyone? Construction related material. First of all, understanding a case study is very important. So you must read the case study properly. Construction related material. Okay, sir. Then Mr. X and Mr. Y are friends of each other and each of them have their own sole proprietorship firm engaged in supplying construction material. So basically, they have their partnership firm also. This is a partnership firm which is of uh, X and Y and X and Y also are into supplying of construction material. They are also supplying construction material plus they have also made a firm which is L and Co. Messrs. L and Co. which is also engaged into supplying construction material. Okay. Then... These firms are registered under GST. These firms are also registered person. Okay. Mr. A, not a CA, is the tax consultant of L and Co. L and Co. Ka, Mr. A is the, is the tax consultant. Don't call him chart accountant because he will definitely do something wrong. So, here they are telling Mr. A is not a chart accountant. He is the tax consultant over there. Okay. Mr. X gets an offer from a customer Mr. X is getting an offer, okay? From W Private Limited, WPL. We can go ahead and say WPL. So, WPL is a company. WPL has gone ahead and given an offer to Mr. X. There is X over here. X has been given an offer by WPL. What? To issue some supply related bill. <laughs> he is asking for bogus invoice. He is asking for what everyone? Bogus invoice. Please issue me bogus invoice. Okay? He wants some bogus invoices. Who? WPL. 
to meet the budget allocated by WPL by their management in relation to civil work so that WPL can meet the budget. So it needs some bogus invoices. Okay. X shall earn a commission of 20% of the value of supply charged in supply bill accepted by WPL. When the supply will be done, 20% commission. He is getting how much? Ah, bogus invoice. You are getting 20% commission of the value of supply, they are telling. Of the value of supply. Whatever is the value of supply, of that 20% commission will be given to him. Okay, sir. Done. Mr. X agrees to a share of 50% of his earning with Mr. Y for undertaking the above project. Mr. X and Y ke saath he told, Y ko he told, I will give you 50%. Hey, y, I will give you 50%. ML and Co. needs a bank loan for expansion of business operation and the supply bill issued by WPL will inflate the turnover of ML and Co. So basically what they are telling over here, in between we have ML, L and Co. Not ML. Messrs. L and Co. So they are telling X is the partner. Y is also a partner. So Y co X told, hey, Y, whatever commission I earn, I'll give you 50%. Let's do one thing. See over here. Mr. X and Y has sought the, so they are telling over here, L and Co. needs a bank loan for expansion of its business operation and the supply issued, bill issued to WPL will inflate the turnover of L and Co. So basically if it uh, business invoice has been, invoice is issued by L and Co., then they are going ahead and telling their LN Coca turnover also will go up. So if the bogus invoice is issued by LN Co, then their turnover will go up and then loan will be easily given to LN Co. So LN Coca turnover will also go up and WPL will also get bogus invoice. Okay, sir. Then Mr. A, uh, Mr. X and Y sought the advice of Mr. A how to execute the above project for the supply to be issued to WPL. Now uh, Mr. A who was the tax consultant, he is the tax consultant, uh, tax consultant. So X and Y has gone to A and told, hey, what should we do? How should we do this transaction? Please tell us. Based on the guidance of by Mr. A, it is executed. So A, the con tax consultant is helping. Okay. He aids or abates. He is basically encouraging or helping in doing this transaction. Messrs. L and Co. shall issue separate rela supply related bill, only bill of steel, jelly, etc. of 280 lakh to Mr. X. Okay, what is happening over here? Sir, how Mr. A, the tax consultant, guided what is to be done? Guided X and Y so that X and Y can make some money out of this fraud. Okay, what he went ahead and told there is Messrs. L and Co. Messrs. L and Co. will issue an invoice to Mr. X because X is also into the supply of uh, steel, jellies, etc. construction material. So, they will he will issue an invoice to Mr. X wherein the delivery site shall be WPL built to ship to model and they are telling X will go ahead and issue an invoice to WPL. WPL needs bogus invoice. His turnover, L and Co. turnover will go up. They will get bank loan. He will give the invoice to him, Mr. X, and Mr. X will in turn give the invoice to WPL and the goods will be, this is bill to ship to model. Goods will go from here directly. Actually, goods will not go, but bill to ship to model will be followed. Goods will not go, only invoice will go. Take a bogus invoice. Mr. X shall avail and utilize the ITC on the bill of two rupees 280 lakh. What they are telling? Mr. X shall avail and utilize the ITC on the bill of rupees 280 lakh. What is the bill everyone? See, what they have told is it shall supply steel, jelly and stone and cement of 280 lakhs to Mr. X. Actually, here when you see it is telling 280 lakhs the supply. But when you see the next line, Mr. X shall avail and utilize the ITC on the bill of 280 lakh. Means what they are meaning over here, this is not the value of supply. Value of supply will be more. This is ITC amount. Okay, sir. Might be a little writing here and there. The ICI, when they have gone ahead and done, Baba, any person can do an error. Small errors can happen. Kind of, let's ignore it. So, what they are meaning over here, the person who has drafted this beautiful case study, I really appreciate people who do things and definitely the person has put in a lot of effort. Small mistakes can happen. Now, what has happened over here? Basically, for ITC of rupees, supply uh, of cement, etc., 
for ITC. What is the ITC amount? 280 lakh. Theke? Now what they are telling Mr. X will avail the ITC of on the bill of 280 lakh. So what will happen? Bill will be given. Input tax credit involved is 280 lakhs. Theke, sir. And Mr. X will take the ITC availed. 280 lakhs. So sir, here first of all he is issuing invoice without any supply, no supply. But invoice has been issued. He has gone ahead and availed the ITC also. And he will go ahead and again issue invoice without supply. Done. Then. And shall be separate and shall separately enter into a contract with WPL for supply of jelly stone to be used in construction material for rupees 280 lakh. That ITC of 280 lakh they are talking about. Let's be careful. Further, Mr. X in his individual capacity shall issue labor related bill. So what is happening over here? Here he has gone ahead and issued the invoice where the ITC was 280 lakhs. Okay. Plus he will also issue a bill in individual capacity. Again, Where 40 lakh rupees is the value of supply they are telling. For rupees 40 lakh for assembly and erection work to construct for a foundation of plant and machinery undertaken at that site. So they are telling they will issue labor related bill. They are giving only labor related bill. Here the intention to give a labor is not there without actually providing any service. So again one more bogus invoice. Here we can also assume it because uh, it has not been clearly told. If you clearly read actually it is. Bill for rupees 40 lakh. Bill for rupees 40 lakh means, sir, the value of the supply is 40 lakh. In the above one also, the bill actually, it was bill for 40 lakh. But in my opinion, what they were trying to tell in the case study, Baba, was that the ITC involved was 280 lakh. In exam, such kind of ambiguity will not come. Don't worry about it. Take it then. WPL will avail and utilize the ITC on the bill of rupees 280 lakh and 40 lakh used for li sub underlying supply of goods. So basically we can take this also as the ITC only. You assume that what they are talking in the question is ITC. In the exam, please be very careful. Are they talking about ITC or are they talking about value of supply? Okay. Here, why I am telling you the WPL will avail and utilize the ITC on the bill of rupees. So, ITC is 280 lakh and 40 lakh used for underlying supply. So, they will go ahead first of all what happened? He went ahead and issued an invoice ITC with invoice without supply. X limited availed the ITC okay? and again it went ahead and issued the invoice so, sir, again it issued a bogus invoice. WPL, what it did? WPL availed and utilized. So, again it went ahead and availed also. First, the ITC which was there wrongly. 280 lakhs and 40 lakhs. 280 lakhs plus 40 lakhs. Plus, for its supply, it went ahead and used it. Utilized also. Take it. Next. For underlying supply means actual supply was there. Actual supply ke liye, actual supply which they had done for that they went ahead and used it. Theek hai, sir. Then all the inventories are updated by LN Co without actual movement and some EV bills are also generated on behalf of Mr. X for the work done. Mr. A, whoever is the chart accountant, assures that inventory registers are up to date, compliances with EV bill have, will be taken care. Chartered accountant is aiding or abating, he is encouraging such kind of events or he is helping, money shall be duly realized as per the bill and they will take the money also. All the, all the khapla has to be done, whatever wrong things has to be done, he will take care, invoices are issued, compliances, EV bill etc. is bogus, invo bogus invoice is issued, bogus EV bills are issued, inventory registers are being maintained properly, all will be taken by Mr. A Charter Accountant. Now, Mr. X approached his friend P, a practicing chart accountant means tax consultant told I will take care of everything here Mr. A is guiding so he will take care of everything then now Mr. P went to his P uh, Mr. B uh -huh. Mr. X went to his friend P who is a chart accountant saying sir what to do Mr. P makes X conversant 
with the following implication that can arise. I hope everyone is. Uh, now let's understand what are the GST implications that can come. This will be your exam question. Now, if you guys remember when we were learning offenses and penalties chapter, in offenses and penalties chapter, last time one circular had come. That circular pe this question is based. What they are telling, first of all, I hope you guys remember. In case where a registered person A issues a tax invoice to B without underlying supply, whether such transaction will be covered under supply. Section number 7, there is no supply only. Whether any demand and recovery can be made from A in respect of the transaction under the provision of 73 and 74 or uh, also whether any penal action will be taken. So, sir, when there is no supply, you are giving bogus invoice. Remember, 73 and 74 is not applicable. Only section number 122 may issuing bogus invoice ke liye, whatever penalty is there, that is 10,000 or the ITC passed on, whichever is higher, that much penalty will come. So, sir, if you see over here, the first one. Issue of invoice by LN Co to X, sir. Here, LN Co is issuing an invoice to X. Supply is not there. So, 73 and 74 does not come whenever supply is not there. But because you gave a bogus invoice, section number 122 may penalty will come, which will be 10,000 rupees or the ITC, which we have wrongly passed on, whichever is higher. So, here 280 lakh rupees is the penalty amount. That much penalty will come on you. I hope this point is clear. Since there is no, uh, since there has been only issuance of invoice by the registered person, Mr. Messrs. L N Co. to a registered person X without supply, the activity does not go ahead and satisfy the criteria of supply under section number 7. As there is no supply by Mr. L N Co. to Mr. X in respect of such tax invoice in terms of the provision of section number 7. 7. No liability arises for the said transaction and accordingly no demand and recovery can be made under section number 74 which is because they are trying to do a fraud they have told 74. That will not come because there is no supply 73 and 74 ka proceeding can't be done. But the registered person L and co shall be liable for penal action under section number 12212. Section number 12212, I hope you guys remember section number 122. Section number 12212 used to go ahead and say that whenever you are issuing an invoice without going ahead and supplying, then you are liable to a penalty of 10,000 or the tax involved, whichever is higher. So here, for issuing invoice without actual supply, the offense is punishable. So sir, you will get a penalty plus the offense is also punishable. If you remember section number 132, section number 132 issuing invoice without supply. Issuing an invoice without Baba 132. I hope you guys have seen the amendment this time. There are small small amendments which is G, J, uh, K which has been deleted. Please take care of those amendments. Okay? Please see the amendment in offenses and penalties chapter which I have already uploaded on my YouTube channel. Very, very important. Okay, sir. That. Sir, why don't you use the amended chart? Baba, I had chart book version 10. I am using that only. The amendment, I have specifically told you to go ahead and do the amendment. Now listen. Now what they are telling over here, whenever you are issuing the invoice, 132 ka penalty will, 132 ka punishment, jail also you will go. And sir, because the amount is more than 1 crore up to 2 crore or more than 2 crore up to 5 crore or more than 5 crore, in case of B, all the three points are applicable now. And hence, remember, because the amount is 280 lakh, so 280 lakh means where will you come? You can go to jail up to three years plus fine and minimum jail will be six months. So please remember 132, 12 may also, you will be sent to jail along with fine, which may extend up to three years. Done, sir. This point is clear. Then, now what happened? Second one. This point is clear to all of you. Second one. He went ahead and issued the invoice further to WPL. Again, Sir, there is no supply. So, 73 and 74 ka proceeding can't happen. But it's an issue of invoice without supply. Plus, he has gone ahead and ITC wrongly avail availed also. So, what they are going ahead and telling over here, the registered X to WPL, the registered person X has availed and utilized fraudulent ITC on the base of invoice in contravention of provision of section number 16 without receiving the supply. Further, there is no supply which has been done. Thus, in respect of the transaction, no tax has to be paid. In this specific area, no demand and recovery can be made. Now, what they are telling? They are talking about this circular again. See, A registered person has issued an invoice to B without supplying of the underline. B avails the ITC on the basis of the, again on the basis of circular, this question is there. B further issues an invoice. Along with underlying supply to his buyer, 
and utilizes the ITC availed on the above mentioned invoice for payment of his tax liability on the outward supply, whether B will be liable to demand and recovery uh, and penal action. What is happening over here? A issues a fake invoice to B. B avails it to pay output tax liability on real supply. If you avail it to use for real supply, then Baba 73 and 74 proceeding will come. But if it is not a real supply, in the given situation, it's not a real supply. See, I'll give you the third issue. Situation A issues fake invoice to B. B issues, B further issues fake invoice to C. Here in this case, demand and recovery will not come. This is the situation which they have applied. Demand and recovery will not come. But remember, penalty will come for A because issued bogus invoice 10,000 or the ITC passed on. And penalty for whom? For B will be takes ITC and utilizes without actual receipt higher of 10,000 rupees or the ITC availed. See over here now. So what they are telling over here, there cannot be any demand and recovery of wrongly or fraudulently availed by Mr. X and such or tax liability in respect of transaction by Mr. X is required to be made under the provision of section number 74. Basically what they are going ahead and telling, I'll read once again, in respect of in respect of the transaction, no tax is required to be paid. In this specific case, no demand and recovery of ITC wrongly or fraudulently availed by Mr. X or tax liability in respect of outward supply by Mr. X to WL is required to be made accordance with 74. Means 74 ka proceeding will not come because there is no supply only. There is no outward supply. So what they are going ahead and telling. However, in such case, Mr. X will be liable for penal action in section number 122 because issue of bogus invoice 12212 will come and section number 127 for issuing invoice without actual receipt of goods services and also for taking ITC without actual receipt of goods. Number one, they are going ahead and telling two penalty will come on X. Number one, issuing invoice without supply. Number two, ITC taken without actual receipt of goods two penalties will come on him that they are going in and telling this offense is also punishable. So this first they have told you have taken ITC without actual receipt that pen, for that penalty will come 10,000 or amount of tax whichever is higher. Secondly, issuing invoice without supply again 10,000 or the amount of tax whichever is higher you have to pay a penalty. Plus I hope you guys remember in section number 132 also when you are issuing an invoice in violation you are again liable for a imprisonment and because the amount is 280 lakhs plus 40 lakh rupees i hope you guys remember he again went ahead and issued 140 lakh 280 plus 40 is 320 320 means you will come over here uh, 2 crore to 5 crore imprisonment can be up to 3 year with fine and minimum is 6 months here over here 132 one two, which is minimum uh, jail term is 6 months which may extend up to 3 year with fine i hope this point is clear wpl now listen to me very carefully i hope this point is done first one may what happened he issued bogus invoice for that the penalty is 10000 or the itc wrongly availed second way mr x went ahead and issued invoice for that penalty itc wrongly taken for that also penalty two two penalties on mr x now let's talk about wpl wpl go, went ahead and itc has wrongly been availed over here and then it has gone ahead and used it for actual supply. So what they have gone ahead and done is they have gone ahead and applied the second case over here. Mr. A issues fake invoice to B. B avails the ITC and uses it to pay tax on real supply. WPL for its real supply it has gone ahead and used it. So it says B has contravened the provision of section number 16 to B. He shall be liable for demand and recovery of the ITC and the penal action under 74. Section number 74 and no penalty or under any other section will be levied. So if you see over here, they would have gone ahead and told WPL will be liable for demand and recovery of the ITC availed and utilized and all along with penal action under section number 74 because section number 74, you have actually ITC wrongly availed and utilized against ITC wrongly availed and utilized to make payment for a real supply. So, sir, along with interest, you will have to pay back for taking or utilizing ITC without actual receipt, without 
receiving the assembly and erection services basically you have not received this services also you have not received this also and this itc of availed and utilized and hence you will be liable for a penalty under section number 74 and that's what they are going ahead and telling use for underlying supply of goods this offense is also punishable with imprisonment they are going ahead and telling section number 132 may you will be liable for a imprisonment also that they are going ahead and telling see which may extend up to three year why is it three year because it's 320 lakh over here availed and utilized this 280 lakh plus 40 lakh so three crore 20 lakh 320 lakhs ke liye you will come over here done sir then gst implication on a mr a went ahead and helped aids or abates the offense under section number 1221 then Baba, that person is also liable for a penalty, which may extend up to 25,000. So remember, who has advised for designing the back business practice shall also be liable for penalty in 1223. Since in the given case, he has aided or abated the offense. The offense is also punishable with imprisonment subject to specified condition. And here, Mr. B appraised Mr. X that if any charter accountant advises, then he will also be liable for a penalty under 1223 for aiding or abating the offenses and may also be punishable with imprisonment. Further, he may also be guilty of professional misconduct, which we have gone ahead and learned. So, sir, can you tell us one more time this thing? So, supposingly, one company went ahead and issued me a bogus invoice. Bogus invoice means that company did not supply. When there is no supply, 73 and 74 can't come. He will be liable for a penalty. Okay. I went ahead and took ITC wrongly availed. ITC wrongly availed and I issued bogus invoice. And I utilized it against the bogus invoice. So, sir, first of all, my offense is ITC wrongly availed over here. And secondly, issuing of bogus invoice. So, for both of them, tax amount or 10,000 whichever is higher, that penalty will come. Now, the last person, supposingly, he has actually done the supply. So, when you have actually done the supply, and against that supply, you have used this. So, ITC wrongly availed and utilized, has been used for actual supply. You will be liable for penalty under section number 74, not section number 122, because actual supply was there. When there is no supply, then only penalty under 122 comes. I hope this point is clear to all of you. This question was based on this circular which we had gone ahead and learned. Please revise this circular again. Read the uh, case study again, once again. Do it with your own hand. You will be more clear on this. Done, sir. Let's go ahead and move to the second case study now. Please come down. Case study number two. Case study number two is going ahead and talking about Doodle LLC is an entity registered in Germany. Take a Doodle LLC. Let's go ahead and draw. Doodle LLC is a company registered in Germany. Okay, sir. Then is engaged in providing online services across multiple countries. Okay, sir. Online services means basically they are talking about OIDR service. The service offerings include certain services which are covered within the purview of OIDR service and liable to GST. So basically they are providing OIDR service from outside India. They should take mandatory registration in India charge IGST and paid to the government under forward charge mechanism whenever they are supplying services to a NTR. I hope you guys remember. Okay. <coughs> Doodle LLC does not have any place of business in India. It appoints one of its employee, Mr. X, not a CA as its authorized representative for the purpose in India, which includes undertaking GST compliances and any authorized signatory for any regulatory compliance in India. Mr. X, so Doodle INC has appointed whom? Doodle INC has appointed Mr. X as representative who will take rep registration and who will do compliances. Okay, sir. Mr. X is also a partner, they are telling over here. In XYZ and Associate LLP, post appointment, the following chain of, so he is also a partner. Where, sir? In XYZ and Associate, XYZ and Associates. Okay, sir. Then, Mr. X, being an authorized representative of Doodle LLC, made an application for registration of OIDA services and undertook compliances. Okay, sir. Subsequently, X started filing the monthly GST returns and made payment of the applicable GST in India on behalf of Doodle INC. In lieu of the service, Mr. X was remunerated a fixed sum as professional fees. The appointment was X in personal capacity and not professional service contracted with his partnership firm XYZ and Associate. So basically, 
मिस्टर एक्स इज ऑल्सो ए पार्टनर इन एक्स वाई जेड लिमिटेड एक्स वाई जेड एंड एसोसिएट एल एल पी बट द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट बाई डूडल आई एन सी वॉज विथ मिस्टर एक्स इन पर्सनल कैपेसिटी नॉट इन कैपेसिटी विद द नॉट विथ एक्स वाई जेड सो ओ आई डी आर डूडल आई एन सी हैड ए कॉन्ट्रैक्ट विथ मिस्टर एक्स ही वॉज द रिप्रेजेंटेटिव एंड नॉट द एल एल पी ठीक For recovery of amount of remuneration from Doodal LLC, the invoice for export of service were issued by Mr. X in the name of partnership firm. Means what he did, he went ahead. Actually, he is providing the service, but he did not go ahead and invoice give, given in his name. Invoice was given in the name of partnership firm. Invoice was given, and it was shown as export of service. Why, sir, export of service? Supplies in India. Due to alliance is outside India. Place of supply, if it falls outside India, and you go ahead, and if you go ahead and get over here, so sir, in OIDR uh, services, location of recipient of service. I hope you guys remember place of supply. In place of supply, we had gone ahead and learned location of recipient of service is the place of supply. Supply is in India. Recipient is outside India. Place of supply is outside India. If you receive foreign convertible currency, this will become export of service, and they will be able to take ITC ka refund. That is why this whole karyakram. This that is why this whole thing is done. ठीक है? The corresponding refund benefit was claimed by partnership firm for the input tax credit on export of service ka invoice so they showed it as export of invoice whatever itc refund i hope you guys remember if it is export of service it's a zero rated supply you will be able to take itc refund theek hai doodle llc appoints influencer to promote services in india the tax invoice for such influencers were received by mr x in the name of llp now what happened doodle alliance because it's an oidr online information database access and retrieval service provider now what they did they went ahead and appointed influencers in india nowadays you see instagram influencers are there lot of influencers are there now supposing this is an influencer over here this influencer will is going ahead and giving services to doodle alliance but the invoice is given over here to the xyz so they are going ahead and telling doodle alliance appointed influencers to promote services the tax invoice for such influencers was received by mr x in the name of xyz llp and itc was availed by the partnership firm sir itc taken on the basis of this invoice service given to the service given to doodle alliance invoice taken by the llp very bad itc not correctly availed wrongly availed such itc was utilized for further supply of service and this itc this uh, firm went ahead and utilized it also for supply against their supply they used the itc wrongly availed and utilized also okay however the actual service was given to doodle llc this service was given to doodle llc but invoice taken in the name of the company very bad then subsequently doodle llc submits certain affidavits and accounting records before the office of the enforcement director being an authorized representative signatory of doodle llc mr x approached mr p theek hai enforcement director ed caught them doodle llc ko ed caught doodle llc was required to submit affidavits and accounting record before ed enforcement director being an authorized representative signatory of doodle llc mr x x approached ayo what to do mr x now went to mr p a chartered accountant and told sir please show us the correct way practicing chartered accountant to prepare the affidavit and accounting record which may include critical financial <coughs> information and data of doodle llc he elaborated the entire arrangement this arrangement this whole story uh, mr uh, x told mr p now mr p mr x and xyz uh, to p he further requested mr p to certify and attest the record which would which would be prepared and complied in capacity of practicing chartered accountant for submission before the enforcement director now here they have gone ahead and told please sir please prepare all these uh, documents attest it and give it to us uh, we have to prepare and submit all the record before the chartered accountant mr p appraises the mr x of the following implication what are the problems that will come mr p is going ahead and telling the mr x that sir bogus person what have you gone ahead and done let me tell you the implications now 
incorrect issuance of invoice for export of service and claiming of refund on the basis of export of service related invoice what you did you went ahead and gave incorrect invoice and on the basis of itc has been wrongly taken as refund okay this is the first mistake mr x was appointed as representative of duda lands in personal capacity to undertake compliance however the consideration for such service at the behest of the invoice issued by the partnership firm further such invoice issued as export of invoice and corresponding refund of itc was claimed the act of mr x will lead to the following number 1 Mr. X supplied services to Doodle without any invoice. Now you tell me one thing. Have I issued invoice? I gave services without invoice. Supply of service without invoice. First of all, penalty. Supply without invoice. Okay, sir. I hope you guys remember. In offenses and penalties chapter. Where is it? Huh. Supply without invoice. Mr. X pay this penalty will come. Okay. Further. He is also liable for demand and recovery of the tax along with penal action under section number 74. Under section number 74. Supply is done. Tax is not paid. See, no supply 73, 74 can't be done. But here supply is done. You did not issue invoice. Supply is done. So 74 will come. And then, oh, when section number 74 will come, please, I'm sorry. Section number 122 will not come. Please be careful about it. When section number 74 is coming, penalty coming under section number 74, any other section may penalty can't be levied. Then, even if the contention is made that invoice was issued for such services by the firm to Mr. X, even if the contention is made that invoice was issued for such service by the firm of Mr. X, the same shall be treated as incorrect or false invoice both mr x and xyz are separate person under the gst law both mr x and xyz are different person the invoices issued by the firm shall be construed as issuing of invoice without supply sir here there is no supply but invoice is given here invoice is not given but actually supply was there you tell me everyone which penalty will come no invoice but supply is there 74 may demand and recovery will come and 74 may penalty will be imposed here supply is not there but invoice is given issuing of bogus invoice penalty under 122 offense under section number 122 will happen done sir i hope this point was clear 74 here no supply but invoice given only bogus invoice 122 one t one issue of bogus invoice penalty will come then incorrect refund claim for ITC on the basis of incorrect invoice for export, this offense is also covered under 122.8, which says that, sir, if you go ahead and fraudulently obtain a refund, then also you will be liable for a penalty. So, again, XYZ will be liable for a penalty of 10,000 or the amount of tax which they have taken the refund, whichever is higher. All the above offenses may be punishable with imprisonment and fine under 122, depending on the amount of def default involved and subject to specific condition basically when you know the amount over here supplying without invoice invoice without supply sir you xyz gave invoice without supply so for them also penalty imprisonment can come secondly supplying without invoice here you gave services where 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 you gave supply without invoice so both these are also punishable under section number 132 jail can happen next Availment of ITC without actual receipt of service. Now here, the next offense. We spoke about this, this and this is fraudulent refund. 122 may again penalty. Okay, these three are done. Now what is again they are going ahead and telling over here. Availment of ITC without actual receipt. You went ahead and took the ITC. Now we are coming to this point. You took the ITC, uh, availed and then you utilized also without going ahead and actually receiving the goods they are going ahead and telling over here xyz receives invoices from influencers who are actually providing services to doodle further the itc was availed in contravention of provision of section number 16 accordingly the itc availed and utilized for further supply of service whenever supply of service was happening you availed and utilized it baba tell me under which section now they are going and telling they will be liable for demand and recovery of the said itc along with penal action under section number 74 now you tell me one thing i am the partnership firm i have actually gone ahead and availed wrongfully availed the itc and utilized it towards my services which were actual services utilized it for supply then baba itc wrongly availed and utilized section number 74 may 
डिमांड एंड रिकवरी एंड पेनल्टी एक्शन विल कम अंडर सेक्शन नंबर सेवेंटी फोर अलॉन्ग विद इंटरेस्ट यू हैव टू गोड एंड पे एट द एक्चुअल सर्विस वॉज प्रोवाइडेड टू डू डल आई एंड नॉट एक्स वाई जेड दिस ऑफेंस में ऑल्सो भी पनिशेबल विद इम्प्रिजनमेंट अंडर सेक्शन नंबर वन ट्वेंटी टू सेक्शन नंबर वन ट्वेंटी टू में ऑल्सो दे आर गोइंग हेड एंड टेलिंग यू मे बी पिनलाइज बिकॉज अवेलिंग आई टी सी ऑन द बेस ऑफ एन इन वॉइस और फॉर्डुलेंटली अवेलिंग आई टी सी दे आर गोइंग हेड एंड टेलिंग ओवर हियर हियर यू अवेल्ड एन आई टी सी ऑन द बेस ऑफ एन इन वॉइस विच वॉज ए बोगस इन वॉइस वेर यू हैव एक्चुअली नॉट रिसीव द सप्लाई सो दे आर गोइंग एंड एंड टेलिंग यू कैन कम अंडर जेल ऑल्सो i hope this point is clear let's go ahead then <coughs> x who is x sir <laughs> x is the chartered accountant sir he has gone ahead now here if you go ahead and see they are telling mr x was fully involved in the wrong doing mr x is the authorized representative not the chartered accountant x the representative mr x is liable for a penalty under 121a section number 121a 28 and told any person who retains the benefit of a transaction under clause 1 2 7 and 9 of subsection 1 and at whose instance the transaction is conducted he will also be liable for a penalty of tax evaded itc availed or passed on and also because he had aided or abetted the offense he will be penalized under 1223 also and since he is involved in aid and abetting the offense committed and at his instance and his Also derive monetary benefit from such practice, Baba. If you go ahead and see, he has also gone ahead and derived monetary benefit out of it, and he has also gone ahead and aided or abetted the offence, and hence, this offence may also be punishable with imprisonment and fine under section number one thirty two, depending on the amount of default which is involved. I hope this point is clear to all of you. One thirty two may on him. the jail provision also can come so here they have to tell if a chartered accountant takes up the assignment and also attests that the certificate also attest or certifies the doodle llc related accounting and record that would have been prepared by him fraud submission before that he may be guilty of professional misconduct and hence he should not go ahead and certify any accounting records which are false so otherwise he will be guilty of professional misconduct Please come to case study number three. Let's go ahead and read case study number three now. Now the next case study which is there is case study number three. ABC and associate LLP, ABC and associate LLP, uh, a form of chartered accountant was empaneled by the commissioner as special auditor. So, Baba, what happened over here? Special audit ka case mein here commissioner is there. Commissioner appointed ABC uh, LLP, the chartered accountant firm, basically a firm. was appointed by the commissioner that you go ahead and do the special audit theek hai sir then xyz a x x limited a registered person was selected by the commissioner for special audit under 66 uh, for a financial year on irregularities notice so basically who is the firm of whose the special audit is going to happen is x limited so abc will do the audit of special audit of x limited based on the commissioner's recommendation basically x limited ka special audit will be done i hope you remember section number 66 audit ka chapter mein we had learned abc was nominated by the commissioner for special audit assume that the following event unfolded in relation to appointment and audit procedure number 1 the appointment of special auditor was based on the undertaking furnished by the firm that the partner of the firm or any relative are not directly or indirectly related to the audity means the abc and the firm they should not be related or any partner should not be related to the audity this is the audity and this is the firm so firm ka along with the audity there should not be any relation that should that was an undertaking which had to be given however while submitting the declaration abc failed to disclose that the spouse of one of the partner of abc was working as full time employee as head of the tax department here one of the partner ka supposingly spouse wife or husband for wife husband is husband is the spouse for husband the wife is the spouse spouse was working as the head head of department of the tax department oh ho this disclosure was not done false disclosure disclosure was not given what will be the implication it says false undertaking submitted so what are the gst implication because you have given false undertaking the essential term of the appointment included that the partner that the 
partner or any of the relative of the partners are not directly linked with the oddity if the spouse of one of the partner was working as the tax head non disclosure of the said fact and and the other engagement document and accepting such tantamounts to submission of false undertaking by the chartered accountant so basically this firm has gone ahead and given their undertaking that we are not related in any way so this is false undertaking false undertaking or false reporting basically which has been done by the chartered accountant to the government authorities further a question may be raised on the independence so it's a false undertaking which has been given secondly a question will be raised on the independence of the audit team concern considering the fact that the spouse of one of the partner is holding a key position so basically whatever audit findings you will raise no they will say definitely you have or might be they will not go ahead and raise any audit finding they will hide something so they have gone ahead and told it's a false undertaking given by you plus whatever questions there can be questions also which will be raised on the independence because whenever you go and do the audit of any oddity independence is the key factor over here so you will be again guilty of misconduct over here wherein your independence which was there was compromised but you never went ahead and reported such thing the next one over here sir material discrepancies in value of stock to the related party by the oddity were noticed by abc if material discrepancies in the valuation of stock so oddity ka stock valuation was this there was discrepancy means there was some wrong things in the stock stock was not correctly being maintained so they are going ahead and telling if abc fails to disclose this material discrepancies in the audit submitted to the office what will be the implication so they are going ahead and telling non recommend non reporting of material discrepancies noticed during the audit procedure and reliance upon incorrect certification this reliance upon incorrect certification is based on the fourth one that the input tax credit of by xyz that is the oddity under gst itc01 special circumstance mein they filed itc01 and they took input tax credit okay was certified by one of the associate firm of abc in favor of x limited so they have gone ahead and told x limited ka case mein this itc01 which was being certified was again being certified by a chartered accountant might be who was a relative basically they are going ahead and telling who was a associate firm such certificate was based on incorrect facts eligible and against the eligible criteria for input tax credit means this itc01 which was being filed and itc was being taken basically for this the ca certificate was given by the associate firm and hence this itc certificate which was there was wrong so they are going ahead and telling the eligible criteria so incorrect facts were there in the certificate also however if abc fails to exercise due diligence the certificate if abc fails to exercise the due diligence and certificate is taken on record as an audit procedure and is relied upon the time of finalization of audit report what will be the implication so what is happening over here they are going ahead and relying upon incorrect certificates and information and going ahead and giving their certificate so what they are going ahead and doing is number 1 abc first of all stock discrepancy which was there they are going ahead and telling the stock cut discrepancy which was being noticed sir they are telling abc fails to disclose the material discrepancy so when they are going ahead and giving their report stock discrepancy not reported not reported okay secondly they are going ahead and telling sir abc ex fails to exercise due diligence and the certificate which was the wrong certificate issued by the chartered accountant was taken on record as an audit procedure and relied upon means they have gone ahead and relied upon a fake certificate due diligence was not being followed and is relied upon at the time of finalization of the audit report and submission of finding what will be the implication it means when they gave the audit report that fake certificate was being taken into consideration fake means the wrong certificate which was there was being taken into consideration and report was being submitted audit report which they had to go ahead and give to the assistant commissioner they gave the fake report so they are going ahead and telling over here abc and team did not exercise due diligence to ascertain the itc availed is not in compliance instead abc relied on a certificate by its own associate firm so who is the associate firm one minute okay 
sorry this certificate which was issued to x limited this certificate which was issued to x limited this itc 01 mein itc which was taken was actually given by abc ka associate firm only and hence abc went ahead and took into consideration that fake certificate only and went ahead and issued its report it was not a related person of x limited it was an associate of abc limited only abc the llp only theek hai then which justifies the incorrect itc claimed by x limited in such a scenario both abc and the associate firm baba the associate firm and abc because associate firm which was a chartered accountant did not go ahead and follow due diligence and abc also relied upon that fake certificate or wrong certificate issued by the chartered accountant which was issued to justify itc claim where aid and abating x limited in wrongful amendment of credit which is an offense penalty under 123 so basically on the associate also 122 3 ka penalty which comes which is 25000 for aid or abating an offense because they gave a fake certificate for itc 01 for wrongful availment of credit abc which went ahead and relied upon that certificate again they will also be penalized under 123 which is 25000 rupees remember this then this offense may also be punishable this offense may also be punished punishable with imprisonment and fine under section number 1321 depending on the amount of default and subject to the condition so basically under section number 132 also because this offense has been done now you have to go ahead and see if this offense is falling under section number 132 then section number 132 may also the person will be sent to jail basically they are talking about this uh, non reporting of discrepancy non reporting of discrepancy the abc as well as the associate firm which is there because they are going ahead and aid or abate the commissioning of an offense sir remember always aid or aid or abate the uh, commitment of an offense if it is falling under section number 132 1 l which says aids or abates the commissioning of an offense then you will have to go ahead and see the amount and you can also be imprisoned further abc as well as its associate firm may be uh guilty of professional misconduct after that the third one over here receiving consideration for special audit from the audity the consideration now what is happening over here sir receiving consideration you went ahead and took who's from the person basically your money will be paid by the commissioner you will who will be paying you you will be paid by the commissioner abc will be paid by commissioner but he went ahead and took money from the audity independence gone secondly you are not supposed to do all those things so they are going ahead and telling the consideration for special audit under section number 66 is payable by the commissioner and cannot be recovered from the audity in the present case the receipt of 5 lakh rupees from x limited that is the audity by abc is an offense under the gst provision the same is liable for penalty under gen, under section number 125 apart from any other pro, pro, a uh, penalty baba actually when you go ahead and take some money this penalty is not mentioned anywhere and hence they have gone ahead and told section number 125 ka 120 125 may it is told when any penalty is not mentioned anywhere you will be penalized with 25000 rupees for the gst law further this will also have an impact impact on the independence because abc ka independence is impacted when you have taken some money from the audity that's all with case study number 3 let's move to the next case study which is case study number Four, please come to case study number four now. Now, case study number four. Fact of the cases: A Limited is engaged in the business of cotton yarn. ठीक है, wherein cotton is the principal raw material in manufacturing process. ठीक है, ABC is there. A Limited is there. ठीक है, A Limited is there, and they are into the business of. Wherein cotton business of manufacturing cotton yarn, so they manufacture cotton yarn. Okay, sir. Then the price of cotton varies upon the market condition. In is dependent upon various external factor. Okay, the Mr. X is the tax consultant. Mr. X advises A Limited on the GST compliances. Who is the tax consultant? X is the consultant. Consultant who advises Mr. A. Okay, then. In order to meet the expansion requirement, Mr. A sought a working capital uh, loan from the bank. Bank, as per the bank, the turnover were not meeting the benchmark. So basically, Mr. A wanted a loan, and their turnover was less. 
टर्न ओवर इज लेस ठीक है सो बैंक डिड नॉट गिव द लोन फॉर सेंक्शन ऑफ लोन फैसिलिटी अकॉर्डिंगली फॉलोइंग एक्शन वे टेकन बाई मिस्टर एक्स बींग द टैक्स कंसल्टेंट सो टैक्स कंसल्टेंट टोन डोंट वरी मिस्टर ए आई विल हेल्प यू इन इंक्रीजिंग द टर्न ओवर ठीक है ए लिमिटेड ए सेपरेट एंटिटी बी लिमिटेड वॉज इनकॉर्पोरेटेड एंड डायरेक्टर्स ऑफ ए वेर अपॉइंटेड एज डायरेक्टर ऑफ बी सो दे वेंटेड एंड फॉर्म वन कंपनी कॉल बी लिमिटेड ए लिमिटेड का डायरेक्टर ओनली बोगस कंपनी क्रिएटेड ठीक है दिस एंश्योर्ड द कंट्रोल ऑफ मिस्टर ऑफ बी लिमिटेड रिमेन्स विथ ए लिमिटेड सो ए लिमिटेड इज मेड वन बोगस कंपनी बी लिमिटेड सेम डायरेक्टर्स कंटिन्यू देर ऑल्सो Further, B Limited obtained GST registration as a manufacturer of yarn, where, yarn, wherein Mr. X associated B in obtaining such GST registration. So basically, they went ahead and they told, "We are also manufacturers of cotton yarn," and B X helped them in taking registration. And this was a fake registration. Mr. X obtained registration on the basis of fake documents. So it was a fake registration which was being taken. So they have gone ahead and taken fake registration, and Mr. X has gone ahead and helped them. ठीक है? तो what first thing will come? GST registration of B sought on the basis of fake documents. Section number one twenty two one seven. Furnishing of false information. Baba, I hope you guys guys remember in offences and penalties. One minute, I'll open the chart. If you guys remember, registration failed or furnishing false information, here also you come under penalty under section number one twenty two one. ठीक है, sir? Will we remember section number one twenty two one seven eight? Papa not required. One twenty two one is enough. Thus B will be liable for a penalty. So because <coughs> over here B what happened? B went ahead and uh, took fake registration. B will be liable for a penalty. ठीक है, sir? Done. then here if you see aids or abates offenses under section number 122 the tax consultant has gone ahead and helped also in b so here 123 may also penalty will come on the tax consultant because he is helping them in taking fake registration this point is an additional point which i am telling you theek hai next what happened subsequently a limited issued invoices for supply of yarn because he has to increase his turnover he issued bogus invoice so i'll rub this i'll do one thing i will take this over here to the next page and we will understand this now a has to increase the turnover so a went ahead and issued bogus invoice theek hai sir then however there was no actual movement of goods by a to b the tax invoices were issued and the same were reported in the return b availed the itc on the basis of such invoice and reported by a So what happened? Issued bogus invoice, invoice without supply. Section number seventy four will not come. Section number seventy four will not come over here. Section number one twenty two का penalty will come. Plus issuing of invoice without supply. Section number one thirty two one में jail will also come. ठीक है done. Then the finished goods related to such tax invoice were sold in the local market by A in cash. Without charging any GST, without issuance of invoice, what A did because uh, bogus invoice was issued, bogus invoice was issued so that the turnover can be increased. Then, the finished goods related to such tax invoices, which were bogus invoices, were sold by A in cash without charging GST, without issuance of invoice. What A did, he sold it in cash in the market. Whatever invoices he had done, whatever invoicing he has done for that supply was not done. But sir, whatever caught. Uh, cotton yarn was there that has to be sold no so he went ahead and sold it in cash without invoice without charging any gst then mr b issued tax invoice for certain provision of service to mr a in the form of testing of cotton repair and maintenance apart from other services however no such services were actually provided by mr b to a the input tax credit avail appearing so what happened b also went ahead and issued for bogus invoice that we have gone ahead and provided some services to mr a tell me one thing when one invoice was received over here they will have input tax credit what to do with this input tax credit they should have some output tax so they went ahead and told we also gave some services but actually some service was not there and they are telling over here 
no service was actually provided the input tax credit appearing in b which was availed on the basis of fake invoice was utilized by b at the time of discharging the gst liability in relation to the alleged tax invoice issued in provision of service so what happened input tax credit was there they have to show output tax liability so they went ahead and issued an invoice and showed a service provided to mr a and there was output tax liability against which the input tax credit was utilized done sir then so here and then what happened mr b further issued tax invoice for sale of yarn to another group comp entities to en uh, ensure that the sale of yarn becomes zero in the books of account at the year end the tax invoice were issued at lower rate contending that the quantity was deteriorated what they did b further went ahead and issued bogus invoice to its own other entities which were there saying sir uh, there actually there was no supply supply without invoice again fake invoice ka case wherein they told whatever yarn we had purchased had gone bad so 90% was had gone bad and only 10% of the invoice means here invoice was issued sorry here supply was not done because anyways he has stock what to do with the stock now see what to do with the stock of yarn because he sold a sale to him now what to do with the stock of yarn so they sold the stock of yarn which was actually not there bogus invoice was given he had stock of yarn that stock had to be cleared so he told the stock was deteriorated 90 percent value gone and he showed a invoice okay only with respect to supposedly one crore ka invoice was issued he issued an invoice of 10 lakh rupees okay then so if you see over here issuance of tax invoice without actual supply Number one, following instances happen. There is no actual supply. However, tax invoice was issued. Fake issuance of invoice for supply of yarn by A to B. Baba, A to B invoice without supply. Sir, when invoice without supply is happening, section number 122 may penalty will come and imprisonment will also come depending on the amount of offense. Okay? Fake invoice for supply of service again. Here it was bogus invoice. So section number service was not there. Supply was not there. So 74 will not come. Section number 121, 122 will come. And, penal, and uh, penalty will come 122 May. And jail will come in 1321 depending on the amount. Done. Fake invoice issued by B to group companies. So that the sale can happen. Again this invoice which was there was not correct. Because this was a fake invoice just to show the sale there was no supply but invoice was given bogus invoice it was there no supply was done again this was the third offense so when there is no supply 74 will not come 122 read with section number 132 one will come the aforesaid are liable to 122 one two for issuance of invoice and this offense will also be subject to imprisonment under 132 depending on the amount of uh, default involved so both all the three may because there is no supply 74 will not come 74 will not come 122 may penalty will come and 132 1 may again section number 122 1 may the penalty will also come with the 10,000 or the amount of tax whichever is higher same over here 122 1 same over here 122 1 why I am writing only 122 1 and not detailed may because in the exam you will not remember 122 1 2 and all so you can write 122 1 also simple next now the next one over here fraudulently itc is availed now you tell me one thing when he went ahead and gave bogus invoice when he went ahead and gave bogus invoice don't you think he took itc also Bo uh, and utilized itc wrongly availed also and then utilized it against fake supply so they are telling over here b availed the itc which is not received and the same was discharged for tax liability relating to invoice on the services which they have gone ahead and supplied b has availed so basically whatever itc was there might be 90 percent of it he went ahead and used over here 10 percent of it used over here and all the itc was utilized okay mr b has availed itc fraudulently in contravention of section number 16 without receiving the supply in this case there is no supply in respect of the transaction and also no tax was required to be paid in respect of the transaction therefore in this specific case, no demand under section number 74 can be made. Basically, there is no section number 74. However, B is liable for penal action under section number 12212. Section number 12212 told what, sir? 
one minute. Issuing invoice without any supply and they are telling you will also be liable for 12217. What is seventh one? Takes or utilize ITC without. So number one, you are issuing the invoice without actual supply. Secondly, you are taking the ITC. Both the penalty will come on B. Okay, sir. Then further, this offense will also be punishable under section number 1321. Sir, why 1321? Baba, whenever you are going ahead and supplying, if you see over here, say chart me, I'll show you. Issues invoice without actual supply, you are liable for a penalty under section number 1321 also. Then Incorrect information in GST and fake uh, falsifying of books of account. They are telling the GST return filed by A and B are not backed by correct information. Knowingly, there, knowing that there was no supply of goods and service and the ITC was not available, the returns were filed by both the companies. A also and B also filed their incorrect returns. The books of accounts and financial record were also falsified. The act is... Uh, of furnishing incorrect GST return and falsifying record 132 may also it is penalized 132 sorry 122 10 may falsifying financial record and producing fake record or furnishing any false information in the return with an intention to evade and the same is also an offense under section number 132 so you will come under penalty also and 132 may if the amount you will have to go ahead and see and basically based on the amount in default you will also be sent to jail then Mr. X, <laughs> Tera kya hoga, Mr. X. Mr. X was aware of the aforesaid A and B. Further, the GST return were filed by X or both the company. Are you aid or abated? Mr. X, being the consultant, had the knowledge of wrongful or fraud or willful misstatement of the fact uh, in terms of financial record and submitting of the information in the return. In fact, Mr. X filing the return and was aware of the fake and ineligible ITC, Mr. X shall be liable for a penalty in provision of 1223, which is aid or abating plus beta. He will, the offense is also punishable under section number 132. Section number 132 may, he will also be sent to jail based on the amount of default. If chartered accountant, so what they are going ahead and asking further, A limited approach P, or chartered accountant to issue relevant certificate to the bank as a genuine turnover to ensure that the loan requirement is sanctioned. Elaborate the entire arrangement uh, made by it with regards to elaborate it. Means uh, A limited approach P a chartered accountant. Baba chartered accountant should not go ahead and give all this certificate. That is what is being told over here. Chartered accountant undertaking the assignment. <coughs> issuing relevant certificate thereby certifying the turnover he may be guilty of professional misconduct further he shall also be liable for a penalty under 1223 for aid or abating and also depending on the amount of default 132 one may he can also be sent to jail so he should be very careful over here that's all they have gone ahead and told this was all about the case studies which were there remember i went ahead and covered over here e-commerce transaction one question 100 percent will come section number nine five remember it properly registration provision with amendment now has come and sir tcs wala provision please be very careful one small question 100 percent secondly ethics say i have already told you what are the various places where chart accountant certified so you should be careful that place and also the role of a chart accountant big paragraph say one small uh, paragraph you can write and come also this case study say one question will come so this becomes very very important for you in this exam section number 122 section number 132 please remember section number 132 is now being amended please refer to the amendment video i have explained it in detail please refer to 122 and 132 properly and go 100 percent one question will come so if you have gone ahead and done this class now i want you guys to again sit Again, read everything. Again, solve all the case studies with your own hand. After reading section number 122 and 132, trust me, you will do amazing. Love you all. I hope you guys enjoyed this chapter which I have gone ahead and explained to you. Please hit the like button. Leave me a comment and also share it with your friends so that all your friends also complete this uh, case studies as soon as possible. Here, we are done with the new chapters and new additions which are applicable for your May 24 attempt. Love you all. Take care. Bye guys.